Lovely. So what's your first name? Debs. Debs. What needs fixing, Debs? My neck. Back of my neck and my shoulders. Right, okay. And how long have they been like that for? Years. Years, all right. They keep me awake. This arm goes dead. Right. Pins and needles. And it's like burn. I have a burning sensation. Right. That's not good, is it? No. Right, now... Jane, can you get us a tea teaspoonful for Debs? So I'm just going to explain about the purple powder. When you come in, it's a bit weird coming to an event, but the first thing we do is get you to take something. You're like, what is it? <laughs> um, it's the most amazing supplement you'll ever find. It's, it's not a vitamin, it's not a mineral. It's designed to put energy into your cells. And once that energy is in your cells, your body's wisdom will decide how to use it. So I never know what it's going to do for a person. But in this situation, because I'm going to be directing my awareness into the neck and the shoulders, it's just going to speed up, speed up the um, healing. You will notice you all sleep fabulously well tonight. Oh, and then you'll wonder, mm. was it the healing? Was it the spirits working on me? <laughs> was it the purple powder? What was it? Uh, and it will be a combination of all those things. Yeah. Right, so this purple powder, you take a teaspoonful on a morning, just on an empty stomach, just in, I usually take it in slightly warm water, it helps it dissolve. It is just rice, but every teaspoonful is like eating a pound of really nutritious purple rice. Um, I've been on it for three years, I'm 56, have a close look at my face, my hair, it's thanks to this stuff, I've been on it for three years. <laughs> you can take it with any medication, whatever you want, because it's just a food, it's just rice. Yeah. Right. And we've got a special on it tonight, so it's usually £57 and it's 35 yeah. But seriously, you will it will be the best decision of your life. I have to say that I've been taking it for two years and I'm not a lot younger than you. <laughs> no, and she, every time I see you, you're looking better and you're some, you're some amazing results, yeah. isn't it? Do you want to tell them a little bit what happened? My son, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. we'll give him a snub for me. Yeah. Yes, he did uh, have like a little porridge. Uh, really, really bad arthritis, yeah. which is yeah. the yeah. other yeah. people along with his growing pains in the knee. Yeah. And he's, he, he plays rugby uh, for the since he was six. Yeah. Yeah. But he's actually yeah. getting on stage when he couldn't actually, he struggled to get to half times yeah. when he had to come off because his knees were hurting so much. Uh, yeah. And we tried all sorts of having physio at least once a month, which is quite a good shot. Yeah. Uh, and as a last resort, put him on purple rice and within, what did I say, three months, something like that. He's like, Mum, I don't need physio anymore. Uh, and the next full season he played, he played every single match, full match, so it was 70 minutes match. Uh, and most of the say growing pains want to go away, but yes, if I tell you, he's grew 10 inches <laughs> in that <laughs> period. So it was like, th there was no way he should have been able to cope. Uh, and he's just actually signed for Championship Academy Ooh, in September. So exciting. he's really going for it now. Yeah. So, yeah, he's got that system. <laughs> we've, we've got a few professional uh, rugby and footballers and uh, tennis players, and we also have got a cyclist on it. Because um, it gives them energy and it doesn't show up in the drugs tests. No. Yeah. Right, onto Debs' healing. Now, when we store energy in your neck and your shoulders, that's responsibilities, that's feeling. You've got the weight of the world on your shoulders, yeah? Yeah. All right. So this is the thing. You're not responsible for other people. If you've got young kids that need feeding and clothing and bathing, yes, you're responsible for them. But grown-ups? No, they are responsible for them. They are responsible. And so what are we responsible for? You're responsible for your choices. You're responsible for being here in this moment. Let me explain. We've sort of been conditioned to derive our sense of self from the stories of the past. So if you were good at something, that sort of boosts your ego. And if you were not so good at something, it sort of diminishes your sense of self. But the truth is, the past isn't who you are. It's just what you've experienced so far. How liberating is it to know you're not your past? That's just some stuff you've experienced. Now the other way we've been conditioned is we've been conditioned 
to mentally project ourselves into the future. When we get the new house, when we get the new job, when we get the new partner, when the baby comes, everything's future, future, and not enjoy this moment. Yeah? Your responsibility is to find this moment. You'll only start experiencing who you truly are when you start holding your awareness in this moment. Because when you're in the past, you're in a story. The story you tell yourself about what happened and the future is a mind projection of what may or may not happen. The only bit that's real is this moment. So Debs, get all your awareness here and now. Mm -hmm. All right, and an easy way to get all your awareness here and now is just to notice. Notice the air coming in through the nostrils. Notice the air leaving the nostrils. Mm. Notice how this body feels. Notice those birds that are singing. Bring all your awareness here and now. How nice this energy in this room feels. Now, if you keep your awareness here and now, you'll start awakening to who you truly are. So what is it we're responsible for? We're responsible for our choices. So you're sort of responsible for what you put in your mouth. You're sort of responsible for the company you keep. Watch, you on, watch on telly. Now, if, you know, in your home, somebody, a visitor in your home, suddenly started swearing, sat in one of the chairs, your mum or dad would probably say, excuse me, but that's not acceptable here, will you please go? But when it's a television, with bad language, violence, stuff that we wouldn't normally see, it's coming into our homes. Yeah, it needs not to. Yeah? That's your space. That's your haven. Yeah? Cool. Now, what are we responsible for? All right, we're not responsible for other people's happiness. Whether or not they're happy or not, that is their choice. Just say that all to yourself now, just in your head. I'm not responsible for anybody else's happiness. That's their choice. If I had a pound or a dollar, for every person I saw that was leaving a relationship because they weren't happy, <laughs> blaming the other person for them not being happy, whose fault is it in a relationship if one person's not happy? It's the person who's not happy. It's not the other person's fault. And so many relationships end because that person isn't happy and they blame, I'm not happy with you. Well, the unhappy person is the one. Yeah? It's basic stuff, isn't it? It's basic stuff. But I've just seen a, a young man leave an absolutely beautiful wife and two kids because he wasn't happy. Well, the problem, it was his work stuff to work out. It wasn't the wife and the kids' fault. It was his. Anyway, he'll be back. <laughs> Once he starts blaming the new girl for him not being happy, mm. he'll be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so Deb's say to yourself, I am responsible for my happiness. I am responsible for my happiness. Mm -hmm. And I'm not responsible for anybody else's happiness. Yeah. All right? And now, instead of trying to keep everybody else happy, I'm just going to be happy myself. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Good. Mm -hmm. That would be a new, new way of life for you, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> That's what's stored in here. That's what's stored in here. Mm -hmm. Now, as much as I'm saying this, Deb doesn't quite believe this yet. Because uh, you, you have the label mother as well. Yes, yes. And as a mother, you feel you're responsible. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, lucky, for me, my, lucky for me, my dad, when I was quite young, about 13, he explained to me that his view that as a father, his job... Uh, uh, there's a story to it. I worked in a shoe shop. I was only 13. And... Um, um, <coughs> I was over people's smelly feet, eh? Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, it seems like a nice cruisy job working in a shoe shop. Yeah, and then, oh, and then there was a, a young man I worked with that got really bad BO as well, and oh, no. <laughs> the two things together, I decided I had to give up my job. So I wanted to write a letter, and my, my dad says, no, you must go in and see the manager. And I'm like, oh, Dad, have I got to? I'm only 13, have I really got to go? Yeah, you've got to go in and face him and tell him that you don't want to do the work anymore. And you can hand it over your letter, but you must go and face him. And I, I, I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to post a letter and not turn up for work. He said, no, you must go. And he says, my job as a father 
isn't to do things for you. My job as a father isn't to make your life nice and comfortable. My job as a father is to prepare you for adulthood. And if I don't get you to do this when you're 13, when you're 13, you won't, you'll stop me not facing the things you fear. So my job is to say, I'll wait for you outside. I'll give you a hug when you've done it, but you go do it. It's not bad, really. That well, it's quite a good. It's good. Yeah. yeah, do face your fears. Yeah. Face your fears. So yeah. I did. I didn't tell him why I was leaving. That's how he felt. I've got a lot of studying now. I'm doing my O levels, so can't fit in this job. But I did face my fear. All right. So this is the thing. Mother doesn't mean, and I don't think you do smother. But you're not mother and smother. It's about. Parenthood is about preparing your kids so that they can stand on their feet in this world. Mm -hmm. You've done that, girl. <laughs> Haven't you? Yeah. You've done that. All right. Notice how your neck and shoulders feel. Yeah, a bit easier. A bit Still easier. Still in the neck, girl. Yeah, it's still a bit in the neck mm. there. There is. Because there's still some stuff there. Mm. See if I can. Look, I'm just going to see if I can get to the actual core issue. <coughs> Did you, by chance, happen to be the eldest child? Yeah. Ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So, a little story from my life. So, I was born in 1962, given the label Jeanette. In 1964, Karen came along, and with her birth, I became a sister. Isn't that weird? How? I wasn't I was just minding my own. All of a sudden I became a sister. And then two years later my brother came along. And at some stage I became big sister and I was responsible. So one of the things that would happen would be we'd all be out and mum would say, You're the oldest, you're the responsible one. You three of you have to stay together. So I'd have a four year old in this end, I'll have a two year old in that end, and if the two year old ran off and the four year old went, I was buggered. <laughs> You know, because I, I was for the high jump because we didn't all stick together. All right, but from a young age, you also had put on your shoulders that feeling of being responsible for others, mm -hmm. and part of you likes it. Part of you like you like being the responsible one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, if you're too responsible for others, they don't learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's more important that they learn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, cool. So just say that to yourself. It's more important that my loved ones learn. They've got why do babies have legs? So they can learn to walk. Everybody's got to learn to stand up for themselves. If we do too much for people, they don't learn. So how does it feel to think about all those people that you feel responsible for instead of feeling responsible for them? you are going to do what you can to create learning opportunities for them so that they can learn. How does that feel? Scary. <laughs> ah. That's the energy that's stuck here, though. It's like, they've all got, to, everybody's got to learn. Mm -hmm. All right? And I'm not, I'm not saying you're going to die, but nobody's here forever. No. And so that's why, as parents, we need to pass on everything we can to our kids, not do it all for them. They've got to stand on their own two feet. They've all got to stand on their own two feet. And then this weight will come off your shoulders. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's why this one I can't take away fully. Because you're still feeling responsible. <laughs> all right? You're mum, but you're not responsible for them. They are responsible for them. And so you've got to do a little bit of programming. Yeah. The best way to do that kind of programming is just as you're going off to sleep. Uh, as we go off to sleep, our brain drops down into theta state, and we're very suggestible. It's like hypnotic progress, uh, uh, hypnotic uh, suggestion. That's the better word, suggestion. And so, were you to play something to yourself about along the lines of, "I'm not responsible for those I love. They're each responsible for themselves. They're responsible for their choices. They are responsible for their happiness. My responsibility is to me." For me to take the choices that are right for me, right for my body, right for my family, uh, right for my relationship. That's my responsibility. I'm res I, my responsibility is to be here in this moment and notice how I feel. And my responsibility is to make the best possible decisions for me in this moment. 
and that will let go of all that other pest stuff. All right, give it another try, see how it's all feeling. Yeah, it's a bit easy. A bit Definitely. easier, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Give her a round of applause.